हरि ओम गुणातीतमान चिदानंद चिदाभासक सर्वगम ध्यान गम्य गुणातीतमान चिदानंद चिदाभासक सर्वगम ध्यान गम्य मुनिध्येयकाशूप परेश पर गणेश भजे मूपम गणेश भजे मूपम गणेश भजे मी कृभ्या महा नमस्ते welcome to session 47 of bhagavad gita verse by verse in the last session we have started to study ishwara swarupam and we will continue with that today the team of teachers dr sanjay mehrotra shrimati rama gopalakrishna shrimati mamata shankar dr vikram kudeg and shrimati padma led by dr hegde sir will help us in understanding the verses 7.06 to 7.12 another young member of our team 12 years old kumari pragna pavan will chant these six verses for us after the presentations but now it's time for us to join shrimati chetana ma'am to sharpen our understanding of verses 7.1 to 7.5 which we studied in previous session over to you chetana ma'am om shri gurubhyo namaha last class we entered into the madhyama shatakam beginning from the 7th chapter and which culminates in the 12th chapter in this uh, shatakam there is a shift in the topics krishna moves from jeeva swarupa to ishvara swarupa from tvam padartha to tat padartha karma yoga to upasana yoga and ishvara anugraha or grace the first three verses in this chapter are were an are an introduction not only to this chapter but to the entire Mad- madhyama shatakam what is the nature of god or ishvara swarupa is the subject matter of this chapter So Krishna begins by telling Arjuna, "I will tell you my true nature. Uh, how samagram completely and a samshayam doubtlessly. But before that, Krishna wants us to meet three conditions, which he men- mentions in the first line of the first verse. Mai asakta manaha. You should have the desire to know God as the final destination. Then you have to put forth effort to follow all the necessary sadhanas." yoga munjan and madashraya taking refuge in god recognizing that we all need god's grace it's like while going uphill a train requires two engines similarly spiritual growth is an uphill task it requires both prayatna and ishvara anugraha krishna continues with the introduction in the second verse he introduces the terms gnanam and vignanam hence the title of this chapter gnana vignana yoga gnanam refers to the lower nature of god the saguna swarupa god with form and vignanam refers to the higher nature or formless nature of god or nirguna swarupam so krishna says i shall impart to you saguna ishvara gnanam and nirguna ishvara gnanam and what is the benefit of this knowledge he says gaining this knowledge nothing more needs to be known in this life so krishna has borrowed this from the well known question in mundoka upanishad kasminno bhagavo vignate sarva medam vignatam bhava iti what is that knowing which everything else is known then in the third verse krishna talks about the glory of the knowledge of god the glory is its rareness and why is it rare because majority of people are busy pursuing dharma artha and kama people wanting moksha are very few among them those who want ishvara gnanam is still less and those who are interested do not know how to go about it so how to get ishvara gnanam the only means is through guru shastra upadesha so from the fourth verse up to the 12th verse krishna enters into the central teaching of the seventh chapter revealing the nature of god but to understand these verses we should keep in mind some essential teachings on creation given in the upanishads 
any creation requires a raw material called upadana karanam or material cause and somebody intelligent to create using this material called the nimitta karanam or the intelligent cause. So scriptures say that God is both intelligent as well as a material cause of creation. But how can one entity serve as both? Upanishads say there are exceptions and Mundo Upanishad gives us the example of the spider. The spider is both the intelligent and the material cause of the web and thus is the Abhinna Nimitta Upadana Karana. So too God is both the intelligent and material cause of this wonderful creation. In the fourth and fifth verse, Krishna introduces his lower nature, Aparaprakriti, and his higher nature, Paraprakriti. Both of them put together is Ishvara. The common factor between Para and Aparaprakriti are both are eternal or Anadi or Nitya, but they differ in several ways. His higher nature, the Paraprakriti, the consciousness principle, is Nirguna without any modification and has an independent existence. Whereas his lower nature, the Apara Prakriti, is the matter principle, saguna, and undergoes modification. Now, in the fourth verse, Krishna says his lower nature or the Apara Prakriti is made up of five elements: Bhumi, Apa, Anala, Vayu, Kam, along with Mana, Buddhi, and Ahankara. He calls it Bhinna Ashtadi Prakriti. His lower nature is the eightfold apara prakriti, which undergoes modification and forms this universe. This is the subtle intermediary stage of evolution based on Sankhya philosophy. He then introduces his higher nature in the fifth verse. Here Krishna says, whatever you experience in this world is his lower nature, the eightfold apara prakriti. Then what is his higher nature? He calls it Jiva Bhutam. He says, my higher nature, the para prakriti, is you, the jiva, the consciousness, the experiencer behind this body-mind complex. Just as the electricity, the invisible principle, activates every electrical gadget, in the same way, this consciousness is the invisible principle activating the inert body-mind complex. That consciousness is my higher nature, says Krishna. And what is the glory of that consciousness? It is because of that consciousness principle alone, idam jagat dharayate, the entire inert material universe is sustained and maintained. This verse is a mahavakyam, showing the essential oneness of jivatma and paramatma. So in conclusion, Krishna doesn't tell Arjuna how to worship him, but how to know him. Why so much emphasis on knowing God when the topic of the chapter is bhakti. <clears throat> if your goal is bhakti or devotion, then how can you worship a God who is totally or partially unknown to you? So we have to know the nature of God, Ishvara Sarupa. Only when you know someone that you grow to love them and develop devotion. Spiritual wisdom and devotion are inseparable. Throughout this Madhyama Shatkam, we will see that bhakti and jnana are not separate. And therefore, Krishna's message is that the whole creation is a mixture of his lower nature, Aparaprakriti, and higher nature, Paraprakriti. In short, this universe is nothing but God. Thank you. Hariyo. Thank you, Chaitanya, for giving us a very clear explanation of the first five verses. And it is through these wonderful five verses that Krishna has offered us to know his true nature. Sada Shiva Samarambam Shankara Acharya Madhyamam Asmada Acharya Pariyantam Vande Guru Paramparam Om. We enter into one of the most wonderful parts of the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Before we go to the verses from sixth onwards in today's class, let us be very clear about what is the role of Ishvara in Advaita Vedanta. In Advaita Vedanta, Brahman is given a lot of importance. We have so many verses like this, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya Jeevo Brahmaiva Naparaha, which insists that Brahman is the only reality 
only reality. That means anything else that we experience is not as real. That the only thing that is real is Brahman. And second and most frightening is that Brahman is none other than my true nature. That means the one who is speaking, the one who is listening, that conscious principle in me is the real thing. Everything else is of a lower order of reality. And that is reinforced through so many Mahavakyas that we are made to chant, we are made to meditate, and we are made to realize, my eva sakalam jatam. Because of me, this whole world has come into existence. My sarvam pratishtitam. I sustain this whole world that I experience. My sarvam layam yatam. That means this whole world will resolve into me. I am that non-dual Brahman. And that is the kind of claim the Upanishads help us to go again and again. In the Chandogya Upanishad, there is another phrase which is repeated so many times, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. Here, the vision is now on whatever I experience. Whatever I experience is none other than Brahman, like Isha Vasya Nidam Sarvam Yat Kinchit Jagatyam Jagat. With that background, we are now entering into the second chapter, second Shatkam of the Bhagavad Gita, where the focus is, has shifted from Brahman to somebody else. We are now looking at Ishwara's true nature, Ishwara Anugraha. That means I now become very receptive to the blessing of the great Ishwara. I do all forms of meditative processes to invoke Ishwara. And earlier we know karma, karma yoga is all about Ishwara Arpana. That means every action that I do, including whatever I'm doing now, is an offering to Ishwara, remember? And whatever I get in return, my karma paladata, the one who des, you know, decides my whole future, I can only make my effort, but what is going to happen with my life is all in the hands of the karma paladata. That means, we are now giving a lot of importance to someone else whom we have never discussed so much before. Who is this Ishwara, Ishwara? Now, are, is Brahman and Ishwara identical? Sometimes this doubt comes. And very often, uh, Brahman is very loosely referred to as Ishwara. But let us remember that as students of Vedanta, when we are in the path of Jnana Yoga, these terms should be very clear to us because sometimes when sometimes we have an understanding, then we are able to overlap. But when we have to explain to somebody, we should be very clear what is Ishwara and what is Brahman and what are the differences between each other. Whatever the Upanishads say are true. The words of the Shruti is final. The Shruti, the Vedas, the Upanishads say, Brahman is the ultimate reality, the only Satyam there is. Remember also, Brahman does not do anything. Brahman has no gunas whatsoever. The Upanishads also introduce creation, what I see before. And they say, Brahman associated with Maya is Ishwara. So we are very clear. I have highlighted in bold and I've underlined. Now, whenever Brahman is associated with Maya, it becomes Ishwara. Can Brahman ever be not associated with Maya? Of course. Brahman can never be not associated with Maya. But as long as Maya is unmanifest, you are talking of pure Brahman. The moment creation comes into being, Maya tends to bring about manifestation. Now let us focus on Ishwara. As I already said, Ishwara is so important because Ishwara is the karma bala data. For every effort I do, and my whole outcome of my life is dependent on the hands of Ishwara. Ishwara is the one who has created this beautiful world. He's the one who keeps this whole world in order. At the same time, we know Brahman is the only Satya. We see some contradictions there. We've already heard that everything else other than Brahman is Vithya. That means this whole world that I'm experiencing, I have to sort of relate to Ishwara also being Vithya. But I know 
that Ishwara is omniscient. That means Ishwara knows everything. Ishwara is omnipotent. Ishwara is omnipresence. But how can I accept that this Ishwara is also Nitya? Now, this Rishti, this Titi, this Laya is done only by Ishwara. Ishwara, that means Brahman plus Maya is responsible. Sometimes, as I said, when the Upanishads refer to Brahman as Srishti Karta, it actually refers to Ishwara. Although Brahman is Nirguna, whenever we talk of Ish Brahman as Srishti Karta, it is actually Saguna Brahman or Ishwara. That means mentally we need to make these corrections. Remember also these things that Maya can never exercise control on Ishwara. Ishwara always has Maya under his or her control. That is why Ishwara is also called Parama Atma. How do we get all this knowledge? All this knowledge has come from the scriptures, from the Shastras. Does the Shastras come from Brahman? Brahman cannot do anything. So Brahman cannot reveal anything. All these Shastras have come out of Ishwara. Now, how do we resolve all this? I will give you a wonderful answer when anybody asks you a trick questions in Vedanta. Whenever anybody asks you about, you know, uh, such questions, ask, ask them, are you talking from a Vyavaharika level or are you talking from a Paramarthika level? What is Vyavaharika level? When I wake up, when my mind begins to function, when I have when I can experience all these objects which look very real to me, this is called a certain amount of reality called Vyavaharika Satya. All of us have dreams also, and in dreams, our dream world is very real. That reality that we experience in dream is called Pratibhasika Satya. When the dream gets over and when I wake up into this Vyavahara, I realize that I was the creator of the dream, I was the sustainer of the dream, and the dream has resolved into me, and whatever has happened in the dream cannot affect me. Vedanta also says that through Guru Shastra Upadesha, we need to understand this is a matter of knowing. It can never be a matter of experience. There is a higher level of reality called the Paramarthika. And once you are in Paramarthika, whatever I happens in this world cannot affect me really because the experiencer, which is other than my body mind, is of a higher order of reality. And that is what all these scriptures are trying to teach. Then what happens? I experience the world. In, world, in the world, what do I see? I see the sun setting. Although I see the sun setting or the sun rising, through Vedantic wisdom, I know that whatever my experience may the reality is something else. So when I integrate in the world, or, or I, I have these experiences, but then there is the knowledge principle that Sri Dakshinamurti has taught us. When we surrender our mind, our ego, when we realize that I am Purna, I am Paramarthika, although I experience sunset or sunrise, although I experience the Vyavahara, which is real, I now know there is a higher order of reality. Once we have this understanding, our teachers now, depending upon our level of maturity, will tell us, initially we see God in the form of Ekarupa. Once we come out of our prayer room, we see everything else. And from the seventh chapter to the eleventh chapter is a preparation for us now to be able to see God in the world around. And through certain verses of the Gita and through the Upanishads to be able to experience God as the formless Arupa. I will conclude this distinction by sharing how Hanuman described his relationship with Sri Rama. He says, with reference to your body, I am your dasa, I am your servant. And that I respect very clearly. As the body, I am your servant. As an individual soul, I know you are the whole and I am therefore a part of you, which is exactly like Vishishta Dvaita. And as the self, I know we are one. And he says this about this, Yesha Mama Manisha, I have a firm conviction. 
So we are here to work on a deeper understanding of Ishvara. The first verse today will be explained to us by Dr. Sanjay Marotra. Over to you, Dr. Sanjay. Thank you, Dr. Hegade. Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha. Continuing from the previous verse where Krishna says that the whole universe is sustained in him or by him. This verse goes like this. Etat yonini bhutani sarvani iti upudharaya aham pratnasya jagataha prabhavaha pralaya tatha. Here Krishna is telling about his real nature where he, the creator, maintainer and the destroyer. And he also says that the whole creation is from him and dissolves in him. Upadharaya iti. A certain that, sarvani bhutani, means all things and being, whatever is bhuta, which is existent, which is things and being, etad yonini, have these two prakritis as their material cause. And this has been described from the previous session. Aham prabhava, therefore I am the source. Prabhava means the source, tatha and as well as the ground of dissolution, which means tataha pralaya. Pralaya means destruction or, dis or dissolution. Kritnasya jagataha. And the whole universe is in that. A certain that all things and being have these two prakritis as their material cause. Therefore, I am the source as well as the ground of dissolution of this entire universe. Next slide, please. Previously, what is apara prakriti and what is para prakriti have been explained. Krishna says that the whole cosmos is originated from him only. One prara prakriti and the eight folds of ara, apara prakriti, which buddhi panch bhutani and the mano buddhi ahankara is derived from him only. The five gross elements Whatever you ever derive from those, for the example, the human body, which is a combination of earth, water, fire, akasha, and vayu, elements have all originated from him only. Etat yoni, the mixture of para and apara, which encompasses almost everything, is him only or has origin in him only. Next slide. So Krishna here revolutionizes the concept of God. What is the concept of God? We, most of us, not now though, someone sitting somewhere like Shiva in Kailashan, of course, at the practical level, that's what we understand even now. Vishnu on the Sheshanat, and they create the earth, planets, stars, galaxies, etc. This is the understanding in the beginning as it is very difficult for a common man to understand the other aspects of the God. So this is the way the, the beginning of the understanding about the God is created or initiated. So the Shastra gives three levels of understanding about God. The first one, God as a person, God as a deity, and then the God as the universe. And the last one, God as Nirguna Chaitanyam, which is absolute truth, pure consciousness, and it's absolute in nature. Now, Krishna says, do not look up God as a person. Learn to look at everything as my own manifestation. Therefore, Sarvani iti upadharaya. Upadharaya means you assert in your mind. You make sure in your mind and digest and assimilate this teaching that everything is in me. This is the most important understanding which you have to get at the second level. Then Krishna say, says, Aham Krishnasya Jagataha Prabhavaha Pralaya Atha. I am the source, Utpatti Sthanam Prabhava or origin of the entire universe. God is Srishti Sthiti Laya Karta of the whole cosmos. And therefore, is titi, srishti is titi laya karanam. He is in and through everything. And now comes one of the most quoted and the most appropriate expression of the God in Brahman. Matta parantara nanyat kinchita asti dhananjaya 
mai sarva idam protam sutre marigana i think this is the most most fascinating words which i think the whole bhagavad gita has very very widely quoted and of course it depicts the true nature of that which is what krishna is a representation of brahman here hari om sir thank you dr sanjay for a brilliant explanation of a key verse while you have given a lot of importance to the highly quoted mattaha parataram this verse which you just explained is the seed for all the verses that come that is why krishna in this verse says upadharaya o arjuna dharana can you pay attention to this yetad yoni this womb this source this source means aham i am krishnasya jagata i am the source of everything and from me everything has come into being no. although shri krishna will give you so many examples in the next few verses if there is only one example that we can understand is the dream example in dream everything that you create in the dream world is none other than you although you create a dream aeroplane or a dream cow or a dream river all that is you so too we need to see this whole world is none other than the shri krishna principle in different ways and forms and that is how the build up comes to vibhuti yoga and vishwarupa ishvara from now on let us be very sensitive to each of these words to be able to see the divinity in everything around us the next and the most uh, brilliant verse which is so often quoted will be explained to us by mrs rama gopala krishna over to you madam shri guru bhyo namaha hari hi om mattah parataram nanyat kinchidasti dhananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutre mani gana iva o arjuna there is nothing whatsoever higher than myself everything rests in me as beads strung on a thread in this verse shri krishna describes ishvara swarupa to arjuna the two factors of ishvara are the higher self para prakruti which is invisible changeless consciousness and the lower self apara prakruti changing body mind complex the matter both are anadi he is both the intelligent and the material cause of the universe and he manifests as the universe as you see in the next slide pooja swami paramarthanand ji pooja swami paramarthanand ji says in the mahabali story with the first step the lord measures the entire world or apara prakruti and with the second step entire para prakruti he takes the third step to remove ignorance and ego to indicate that there is nothing other than himself in this universe here uh, dhananjaya is arjuna the conqueror of the web and indriyas also shri krishna further explains mattah parataram nanyat kinchidasti that is whatever is imagined or exists does not in reality differ from me mattaha is just as the dream objects are not different from the dreamer ishvara is not different from the seen or the seer he is the revealer of everything the seer and the basis of maya which transforms into all that is seen parataram is as compared with me kinchit anyat nasti whatsoever no cause or effect exists beyond me later he introduces adhyaropa apavada prakriya he says the world as karyam is superimposed on me the karanam you can see this in the next slide the ornament is non substantial and gold alone is the ornament is a manifestation of gold with the name and form likewise the world is another name for me in a different configuration i express as jeevas but never become a jeeva mai idam sarvam sutre maniganaiva protam the whole universe is made up of me alone says shri krishna prota 
is the most significant Upanishadic, Upanishadic word meaning interwoven in the creation like warp and weft in a piece of cloth. The Sutra Mani Drushtanta can be understood in two ways depending on the meaning of the word Sutra. This you can see in the next slide. With reference to Parabrahman, the whole creation is like clusters of beads and Parabrahman is like the invisible inherent thread keeping the mala of the world together as a beautiful garland. It is inherent in the creation as Sarvantaryami. Like the string pervades the entire mala, the aggregate of all experiences and effects at the samasti level are strung on the indwelling consciousness in everything. Secondly, with reference to the Sutratma, the creator Brahmaji, the aggregate of all experiences and effects at the VST level or the beads. For example, in dream, they are strung on Hiranyagarbha in the form of Taijasa, who is the seer of dreams. Considering each of our life as a bead, many past and future lives are beads that contribute to a garland. The thread passing through all these beads is Sutratma that gains many bodies on the path of moksha. This verse conveys the message of the Mahavakyam, Sarvam Khalvidam Brahma. If we can begin to develop this vision, then all our so-called problems with objects, people, and situations will disappear. Thank you, sir. Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Thank you, madam, for a very nice explanation of a very important verse. And once you have explained, the whole verse is very clear. Krishna says, other than I am the uncaused cause. For every cause, there is another cause. But the original cause is uncaused. Shri Krishna declares himself as the uncaused cause. And the next and very important verse, my sarvam idam protam. Uh, Madam gave a lot of importance to the word otam, which comes in the Mundaka Upanishad, that which pervades in an imperceptible manner, which is in and through everything. All we need to do is meditate on these words with a great degree of understanding. My sarvam idam protam sutre manigana eva. This is for our own meditation. And this will help us to understand everything and anything, including your own body, your computer, whatever you handle is none other than Sri Krishna. Then what happens? You develop a tremendous amount of reverence. When you study these words, you go into a different plane of understanding altogether. You need to be able to experience a shift from God as a person to godliness. How do you get this big view? Right now you will say space is in the room or is it more clear to see this room is in space? Can I say God is in the universe or is the universe in God? The more you reflect on this, the dream world is in you or the dream world is you. Shri Krishna has shared himself to become the whole universe. And therefore, everything that I experience, including this body, now becomes so reverential because we don't have to go to Udupi or anywhere to Sri Krishna or Vrindavan. Shri Krishna is in and here everywhere. The more you understand these beautiful verses of the Gita and meditate on them. Mamata will lead us to the next two verses. Over to you, Mamata. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. The first mantra of Isha Vasya Upanishad, Isha Vasyam Idigam Sarvam, and it goes on, says that the entire universe is the manifestation of God or Ishvara. This Ishvara pervades through all the living beings as Brahman or the consciousness principle, also known as the higher nature of Ishvara. Lord Krishna further elaborates on the manifestation of Ishvara in the shlokas 8 and 9. In the context of these shlokas, when we refer to Ishvara, it means the higher nature or consciousness principle of Ishvara or that of Lord Krishna. 
in the next slide chanting shloka 8 raso hamapsu kaunteya prabhasmi shashi surya yo ho pranava sarva vedeshu shabda khe paurusham rushu in his teachings to arjuna shri krishna says raso hamapsu kaunteya when you drink water you just do not look upon it as water but the very essence of water is me me in this context is krishna's higher nature which is nothing but the consciousness principle of ishvara as mentioned earlier ishvara is the light radiance the brilliance in the sun and the moon prabhasmi shashi surya yo in fact this brilliance or light alone is worship in the most famous gayatri mantra which is considered to be the essence of all the four vedas it is the prayer addressed to the light in the sun the light symbolizing the consciousness principle of ishvara pranava sarva vedeshu ishvara is the pranavaha pranava means omkaraha which is again considered to be the essence of all the vedas and ishvara is the essence of the sound principle also in the all pervading space shabda ke to top it all the es- essential nature in every human being is the manifestation of ishvara paurusham drishyo in the next slide krishna continues the discussion of ishvara in the ninth verse punyo gandha prathivyancha tejashchasmi vibhavasau जीवनम सर्वभूतेशु तपश्चास्मि तपस्विशु नो फ्रेग्रेंस कैन बी कंपेयर टू दैट व्हिच अराइजेस फ्रॉम द अर्थ आफ्टर द फर्स्ट शावर इन द रेनी सीजन श्री कृष्णा सेज दैट व्हेनेवर वी स्मेल दैट प्लेजेंट फ्रेग्रेंस वी शुड नो इट इज ईश्वरा इन द फॉर्म ऑफ फ्रेग्रेंस दैट इज पुण्यो गंध पृथिव्या the heating principle which is the essential nature of fire is ishvara as well that is tejas chasmi vibhavasa the very life principle because of which all living beings are born without which they are inert is also ishvara jeevanam sarva bhuteshu as the shloka uncovers its essence shri krishna says tapas vishu tapas chasmi among the human beings there are some who are spiritually more evolved they are called tapasvinah because of their tapas perseverance commitment they have accomplished either materially or spiritually and in those tapasvis ishvara is tapah or austerity putting it all together with an analogy there is no gold ornament without gold and there is no clay pot without clay similarly there is no world without the ishvara that is brahman in this context brahman is the ultimate reality of this universe in the next slide this ishvara or brahman the one and only reality is our essential nature which we have to discover to understand the world as brahman most of us are at the level where we cannot perceive that universe is manifestation of ishvara as a seeker our spiritual practice should be to train ourselves and in turn train our mind and intellect to see the world the way it truly is that is attitudinal change from i am this name and form and the world is different from me to realizing i am brahman the consciousness principle the eternal bliss which is my essential nature the world perceived as brahman is the only reality and the world we think is a world with many names and forms is just an appearance spiritual practices involving strengthening our fourfold qualifications meditation and gnana yoga helps to discover this highest state of eternal bliss or divinity that is brahman within us this will enable us to see the same divinity underlying everything in the universe this way we will see oneness everywhere which is ishvara or brahman with reverence i would like to end with a quote in the next slide sir i would like to end with a quote which will aptly summarize these two verses 
Upanishad say, He, the Lord, has pervaded the universe. It is all His. Thank you, sir. Hari Om. Thank you, Mamta, for a nice and a clear explanation of two very important verses that Krishna has given us from the Bhagavad Gita as such a wonderful gift. Once these verses are understood, what we need to do is each time I drink water, I feel the taste of water, I feel Shri Krishna. Wherever I see light, maybe of the sun or the moon or the light in my room, it is none other than the Shri Krishna principle. It may be traffic noise, it may be a dog barking, but any Shabda that you hear, whenever you hear a sound, the sound is there, but you hear it here. Can we move from the sound to the silence? Pranava, the Omkara, which is the essence and very nicely explained by Amata. And finally, what is the greatness of any human being is that you are human. You have a feeling for others. You manifest the glory of being human. And if we can be humanness, so this is the amount of richness that is in the first verse that she explained. Then we go to each of the elements where when there is the first rain and you feel the smell from the soil, Shri Krishna says, that is me. When we see the heat that comes from the fire, feel that every jiva, I can experience jivatvam in me and from people around, feel the presence of Shri Krishna in every living being, plant, animal, insect, whatsoever. Whenever we hear of Tapasvi, I'm reminded of Tapovan Maharaj, the, the great Acharya, the guru of Sri Swami Chinmayananda. So the Tapas, the austerity in the austere is also the Sri Krishna principle. We go to the next two verses, which will be explained to us by Dr. Vikram Hudet. Over to you, Vikram. Guru Namaha. Uh, Continuing Ishwara Swarupa, uh, so verse 7 10. Bijam Mama Sarva Bhutanam, Viti Partha Sanatanam, Buddhir Buddhi Mata Masmi, Te Tejas Tejasvi Namaham. So uh, going to the second line, Buddhir Buddhis Masta Masmi, I am very intelligence principle behind the intelligent people. There are some people who are extraordinarily intelligent and their glory is because of their intelligence. That intelligence I am. That means what? Because of my blessing alone, the intelligent people are enjoying the intelligence. And similarly, Tejasvina, Tejasvina Asmi. I am the boldness, the valor in the valorous, in the bold people. So boldness stands for the capacity because of which a person is able to overcome the obstacle. That is called boldness. And that uh, parakrama in people also I am. And from all these things, we have to derive certain important corollary also. Because the essential nature of everything is God. If we have got any of these virtues, like boldness, like intelligence, like knowledge, if any of these virtues is in me, I should remember they really do not belong to me, but they are the manifestations of God. Therefore, the credit does not go to me, but it goes to the Lord alone. Therefore, the more I appreciate God, the more humble I will become. Humility born of knowledge will remain, but without proper understanding, humility will be only a show. Outside, they will be humble and inside, they will be arrogant. Real humility will come only when this is understood. Therefore, if you get any degree, any honor or anything glorious is uh, is there and when somebody praises you, better remember God and if you uh, get any award also place it in front of the God. This is one coronary. Understanding Ishwara will give you humility and ignorance of Ishwara will lead to arrogance. And the second advantage is, which is equally important, that when I see a glory in any other person also, I will never become jealous. When does jealous comes? When I compare my glory, which is not there, my assumed glory to another person's glory. And I find that the society is glorifying that person more than me, better hour, better degree, better salary, better appreciation. Comparison leads to jealousiness, which is terrible. 
Jealousiness is the worst form of disease because it burns you eternally. When I appreciate God, I can never have jealousy because all the glories belong to only soul. So whenever I see any glory, let me learn to congratulate. If a per person sings better than me, I go and appreciate. I'm able to see the Lord's glory in you. Therefore, humility is one result and non-jealous or appreciation is another benefit of Ishwara Jitnana. And then comes the first line. Krishna says, Sarva Bhutanam Sanatanam Bijam Vidhi. In fact, this should be uh, read at the end, which is the summing up line. But anyhow, Krishna gives it. Bijam means seed, the primal cause, the basic cause. We use the word primal because the, the cause can be divided into two types, the intermediate cause, or the ultimate cause. So our parents can be intermediate cause, but whereas causeless cause is uh, the God. So God is parentless parent. He is fatherless father. Uh, therefore, Krishna sees Sarva Bhutanam Bijam, which is Sanatanam, which does not have a beginning, Anadi Karanam. I am the causeless cause of the creation. Balam Balavatam Chaham Karma Kama Raga Vivarjitam, Dharma Virodho Bhuteshu, Kamosmi, Bharata Rishba. Now, the same idea is continued. Here, Bharata Rishba is another title of Arjuna. Bharata means descendant of Bharata. Rishba means Shrestha. So, Bharata Vamsha Shrestha or Arjuna, who is the greatest in your family. The idea is the student should feel fine. So, psychologically, a happy mind absorbs. Therefore, a teacher uses this technique, you are wonderful, you are beautiful. Uh, uh, so encouraging the student. Uh, so, uh, so in that way, Balavatam Aham Balam Asmi. I am the strong people. I am the very strength. But Krishna wants to divide the strength into two types. One is uh, constructive strength and the destructive strength. Constructive is uh, uh, where... Uh, uh, the, the strength which we see in Rama, all those things are constructive strength and adharmic strength we see in Rakshasas. Uh, so Krishna says, uh, the strength which is not backed by selfish desire, uh, 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 that strength will become destructive because, because to become great, I have to suppress and destroy others. So Kama means desire, selfless desire. Raga means attachment. Therefore, it's a strength which is free from, uh, which is not polluted by Kama and Raga is the strength, which is the difference between Kama and Raga. Kama is desire with regard to an object which is not yet acquired by me. So when, uh, for example, watch is in the shop, I have not bought this shop, I have a desire for this watch. So aprapta vishaye Kama, and the moment I buy the watch, there is no more problem of desire because it is already my watch. And therefore, now Kama is converted into Ragaha, means attachment to this watch. Therefore, Prapta Vishaye Ragaha. Before buying, it is desire. After buying, it is attachment. This Kama and Raga are the poison. And that strength, which is free from both of them, is pure strength. And Krishna says that pure strength I am. Not only that, in second line, he says, Hey, hey Arjuna, I am in the form of Kamaha. So the desire also in the people who have desires, I am in the form of Kama also. In the people who with desires, in the desire written people, I am very desire. Now it is confusing. In the previous line, Krishna said, I am the strength which is not polluted by desire. That means in the previous line, desire was present as, as an impurity. And that is why he said strength must be free from impurity called desire. Now in the second line, Krishna says, I am the desire also. That means what I am, impurity also, no, just as we divided the strength into two types. Again, desire also we need to uh, uh, divide into two types, adharmic kamaha and dharmic kamaha. Uh, so the ultimate desire for moksha, uh, moksha is also a desire. So, so the de desire for moksha, the desire for values, desire for sadhana, chatusha, sampati, desire for gita class, all dharmic uh, desires uh, come, uh, 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 Krishna is telling that is me, not the adharmic uh, desire. Even uh, if, if you earn money for noble activity uh, or uh, no, uh, noble, uh, useful for purification of mind or purification will be useful for knowledge. 
Krishna says, such a dharmic desire I am, and therefore he says, hey Arjuna, aham uh, kamaha asmi, what type of desire? Uh, I am I am the noble desire in the noble people, and uh, uh, that's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram. That was a nice explanation. Uh, explanation of the verses are very clear, but what is very important is the understanding that, uh, as you rightly said, let us go to the second part. Whenever you see somebody who is brilliant, uh, fortunately, we have in our group a lot of doctors who have highly specialized in their field of experience, who have developed a lot of skills. And when you have a lot of skills, you feel there is a feeling that I am great. But the verses like this will tell you the greatness that we manifest in the work is the Sri Krishna principle. And as you said, there is a pseudo humility and this is real humility. The real humility is the understanding that Sri Krishna is functioning. I'm only a medium through which I function. And this allows me to appreciate the glory in another person because whenever somebody does something good, I'm able to appreciate the glory in that. So any strength that you see, and of course we understand about karma vivarjitam and uh, uh, dharma viruddha karma. All these things were very nicely brought out in your explanation. We come to the last verse for today, and that will be by Padma. Over to you, Padma. Guru Bhyo Namaha. We have seen in earlier verses that where Lord Krishna says, he is of two kinds of nature, apara prakriti, lower nature, a variable matter with nama rupa principle, and para prakriti of a higher nature, non-variable and conscious principle. And this combination of apara prakriti and para prakriti is Ishvara. And Ishvara is Jagat Karna. Since Ishvara is Jagat Karna, cause of the entire universe, the whole universe is the manifestation of Ishvara with various Nama Rupa. Ishvara is Shrishti, Stiti, Laya Karta, the creator, sustainer, and destroyer of the whole cosmos. Ishvara is not Paroksha, he is Pratyaksha. All that we see is him alone. Lord Krishna is arriving at Vishwarupa Darshana. He says he is Surya, Chandra, Akasha, Buddhi, and the entire creations are born of me. So instead of enumerating every creation, Lord Krishna makes a collective mention in this verse. E chaiva sattvika bhavaha, rajasa stamasa chay, mata edeti tanvidhi, Natvaham teshu temai, meaning all the states of mind which are affected by sattva guna, rajoguna, and tamoguna, know all of them to be born of me alone. I am not dependent on them, but they are dependent on me. The entire creation consists of three types of karyams or products because apara prakriti has three aspects of gunas sattvika, rajasika, and tamoguna. And based on these three karyams, the creation too has to be compounded by these three gunas. In the mind, there are two parts. One part is the ever-changing thoughts, the apara prakriti, and the other is a changeless consciousness that belong to the para prakriti. Bhavaha in the verse refers to manubritti, ever-changing thoughts, antakarna, parinamaha. Sri Shankaracharya says that inner world of thoughts and emotions are temperaments on nature of Sattvaruti, Rajasaruti, and Tamoruttihi. We know Rajas denotes restlessness or active principle. Tamas is a principle of inertia. And Sattva Guna denotes the principle of nobleness, serenity, and harmony. This is the essence of the first half of the verse. Lord Krishna continues, Mata eva iti tan vidhi. Vidhi tan, know that. Mata eva iti, every thought in your mind is from upper part of me. Swami Paramarthananda ji says that it does not mean that we can have wrong notions and do wrong and attribute it to the Lord. No. The thoughts are generated out of two karnams, Samanya karnam and Vishesha karnam. He says that Ishwara is only Samanya karnam for the rise or originating of thoughts. And Jiva, the Vishesha Karnam, is a specific cause for the type of thoughts that arise of your buddhi, intellect, and your own free will. 
he gives an, the example of car and the driver. The car and its petrol and the petrol in it are the samanya karnam and driver the jiva or vishesha karnam is responsible to move or take the car in any direction he may desire of his own free will. So all creations are the products are born out of both Ishvara, the Samanya Karnam, and Jiva, Vishesha Karnam. Ishvara provides the pan Panchabhutas and other matters. And what does Jiva contribute? Karma. Karma doesn't have a beginning. It is Anadi. Ever, karma is, even every karma is prece preceded by its previous karma, probably from Punar Janma. And Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, Aham Nateshu, Teshu here means the three gunas. Karyam padarteshu aham ashrito bhavami. I am not dependent upon the products of the world. Teshu mai ashritaha vartante. Vartante. The entire creation is born of me, is dependent on me. The world of the three gunas is superimposed on Ishvara. The power of appearing as prakriti is inherent in him. This is the meaning of I am not in them, they are in me. So even after the pralayam, when the world is resolved, he continues to exist. He is satyam and the ever-changing world is mithya. Sri Shankaracharya says, Brahma satyam jagan mithya. Jivo brahmaiva naparaha. Brahma is the only truth. The world is unreal. There is ultimately no difference between Brahman and the individual's self. Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Padma, for a nice explanation of a difficult verse because you see a change here. Sri Krishna is introducing the various aspects of Maya Devi in the form of the three gunas. And because of these three gunas, we get so deluded, so attracted, and we miss the higher principle. The last part, you will see a seeming paradox. He will say, they are in me, but I am not in them. Here we see that we have to understand two levels of reality, Sri Krishna as the Paramartika and those things as the Pratibhasika. For example, the dream is in me, the dream world is in me, but I am not in the dream. And it is that way you will be able to understand. With this seed verse, which will take us to the verses of the next class, which will tell us about why is it so difficult to cross over this, this uh, because, of the, because of Maya. Maya Mohini is so attractive. However, if you are a Bhakta, and he will introduce the various levels of Bhakta, the four types of uh, bhaktas in the next class. We will conclude by listening to all these verses that we have studied. It will be chanted by the young Pragna. Over to you, Pragna. Thank you, sir. Harium Shri Guru I'll be chanting from 7.6 to 7.12 verses. Eta Dhyoni Ni Bhutani Pervani Tupadharayam Aham Krishnasya Jagataha Prabhava Pralayastata Matha Parataram Nanyata Kinchidasti Dhananjayam Mai Sarvamidam Protam Sutre Mani Ganaiva Rasoham Apsukaunteya Prabhasmi Shashi Surya Yoho Pranava Sarva Vedeshu Shabdha Khe Paurusham Dishu Punyo Gandha Pritivyamcha Tejas Chasmi Vibhavasau Jeevanam Sarva Bhuteshu Tapas chasmi tapas vishu. Bijam maam sarva bhutanam. Vidhipata sanatanam. Buddhir buddhi matamasmi. Tejas tejas vinamaham. Balam balavatam chaham. Kamaraga vivarjitam. Dharma viruddho bhuteshu Kamosmi bharatarshabha 
ये सात्विका भावा राजस्ता मत एवेता विद्धि नहम तेषु ते मयि हरि श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रज्ञा फॉर मेकिंग द वर्ज साउंड सो ब्यूटिफुल Thank you, all speakers, for re-emphasizing Upanishad Vakya, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. The take-home message is: God is not in this world, nor the world is in God, but the whole world is God Himself. Pranams to our Kaivartaka, Dr. Hegde sir, for navigating us through the class comfortably. In our next session on Friday, we'll go to the next topic of discussion. As always, please log in by 6:45 p.m. on Friday evening. Until then, Jai Shri Krishna. पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्य पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ